eQuez. Your quest for education starts here. Welcome to eQuez Audio. Hello, everybody. I'm Margaret Feldman, the founder of eQuez, a platform that helps students discover careers, find best fit schools, and make smart choices about higher education. This is episode two of Inside with eQuez, where we take an inside look at the journeys and lives of students and professionals who are studying to enter or work in a particular career. Today, we are speaking with Dr. Muhammad Ramawi, a podiatric physician and surgeon. After listening to this episode, if podiatric medicine sounds interesting to you, visit eQuez.com, that's E-Q-U-E-Z.com, to get connected to best fit podiatric medical schools. Dr. Ramawi is a board-qualified foot, rear foot, and reconstructive ankle surgeon. He is a current associate of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons. He received his doctorate from the New York College of Podiatric Medicine. Dr. Ramawi then went on to complete a three-year reconstructive foot and ankle surgical residency at DeKalb Medical Center, as well as Jefferson Health. While at Jefferson Health, Dr. Ramawi was awarded by his colleagues and hospital staff as the Podiatric Resident of the Year. Now, let's hear from Dr. Mohamed Ramawi. Dr. Ramawi, uh, thank you so much for being on our show. We're very excited to have you. Excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, let's just get started. So how did you first learn about the field of podiatry? Uh, you know, I stumbled upon it. My, I want to say it was very late. It was probably my third year in college. So mm-hmm. the idea was to go to med school. And right. I always wanted to do something involved with sports. And that was either sports medicine or orthopedic surgery. I was leaning towards more towards orthopedic surgery. Um, then I learned about the route to get to that point. And it was med school, and then you have to score a certain score to be placed into a specific residency. It wasn't um, something that is guaranteed. It's not a guarantee because you get into med school, you're going to get the spot you want. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some of my friends, you know, be placed in other residencies that they weren't too fond of. And I told myself at the time, if I don't get orthopedic surgery, I'm not going to be as happy as I as I know I will be. So uh, I stumbled upon podiatry, and and before then, I really thought podiatry was more of a chiropodist thing where they just looked at feet, took care of day-to-day stuff. Um, Come to find out that they did everything below the knee, really, surgically, uh, treating-wise, injury-wise. And uh, I told myself, why not? Why not just specialize from the start? Instead of taking that chance and going that route, I I know my field from where it begins. And not only that, but I'm a specialist in it. So it, it just made sense at the time. Yeah. Got it. Well, that's really interesting. So you found it later on in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, I didn't. High school, first two years in college, I didn't know what podiatry was. I never shadowed anybody, never really looked into it. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was kind of just doing my homework and I was ready to take my MCATs and I was ready to kind of get my stuff in order, uh, someone had brought it up and I said, oh, let me let me take a look at this. And I was dumbfounded by the things they've done, the research they've uh, have. And um, and then I made the decision. Yeah. Great. Well, that's I'm glad that you you found it. Uh, sure. Is there a particular uh, area of podiatry that you focus on or are you more of a generalist? No surgery. So surgery? I've, I've always been. Yeah, I've always been fond of surgery. I just, uh, it's hard to describe, but I always found that that was my niche. You know, I was mm-hmm. decent with my hands and uh, uh, it was a mix of uh, handwork and academia. So I always wanted to be a surgeon and I always wanted to do trauma related or injury related surgery. Okay. So that's kind of what I want to gear my practice towards. But, you know, I'm early on. So uh, podiatry is unique in the sense you have to know knowledge on every little thing at the first you know, once you become established, then you could pro- kind of gear your practice towards your niche. Okay. So although that's my goal right now, I, I'm doing everything from A to Z. Okay, got it. And what types of surgeries do podiatrists perform? Everything. You'll be surprised. You know, a lot of people um, take podiatry as a bunion hammer toe kind of field where, you know, the top of the line does bunions and hammer toes, but not really. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to train with some outstanding surgeons Mm-hmm. where we did it, everything from ankle fractures to something called pylon fractures, which is a very high-end injury of the tibial bones. 
We did open fractures. We did complete reconstructive surgeries. I mean, the things that I, I show people what we've done, they're dumbfounded by, you know, they would never think that we would be able to do this. So uh, I would definitely urge people to take a look and, and see uh, the things we've been doing. It's, it's kind of remarkable. Yeah. I mean, before I knew about podiatry, I had no idea that you did surgeries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, the three main things we get as podiatrists is, oh, what's podiatry? And oh, so you work with kids because they think it's uh, pediatric, you know, mm -hmm. instead of podiatry. Yeah. And uh, last but not least is, oh, so you like feet, you know, and, it's, <laughs> yeah. and you're constantly trying to get yourself out of this stereotype that people have. But in time, I think people will appreciate the field. Sure. So where sure. do you work as a podiatrist? So I was fortunate enough after my training to land a job in uh, Grand Central New York okay. and, you know, the Mecca of New York City. I'm a lifelong New Yorker, so it's, it's nice to be back. Mm -hmm. So we have an office literally in Grand Central New York, right across the street from the station. Um, and uh, it's a private practice. We see an array of patients from, you know, diabetic to injuries to day-to-day -day care. Um, so again, you know, podiatry is unique in the sense you have to be a different type of specialist for different types of patients, you know, mm -hmm. if there's something, uh, dermatological on the foot, you have to be a dermatologist that day. If mm -hmm. you're dealing with infections, you have to be an infectious disease doc that day. Uh, you're a radiologist every day because you read an x-ray, CTs, MRIs, and you know, when the patients come to you, they expect you to know these things. It's not... Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you don't have the luxury of saying, hey, listen, I'm not the specialist. If it's on the foot, they assume you're the specialist. Right. So uh, you have to have a, at least an idea of everything that comes in. So that's the kind of practice we're in right now. It ranges from everything from A to Z. And uh, I'm very fortunate to be there. Honestly. Excellent. And so what does your typical day look like? Yeah, that's a great question, honestly. And, you know, I'm, I'm fresh out of residency. So mm -hmm. uh, this is probably my third month into private practice. So you know, we start at 8 a.m. in the morning, so I get there around 7.30. Mm -hmm. I kind of get an idea of what patients I'm going to be seeing, um, if there's something I should follow up on. And I kind of I cheat a little bit because I'll read about the complaint the patient has, and I'll make sure I, I'm ready for every option, every scenario that comes in. Because sure. to me, the, the worst thing to do is be unprepared. So if a patient comes in with you know, some sort of heel pain and you have no idea what's going on and you have to sit there and stumble, uh, the patient loses confidence in you, and rightfully so. I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. So I kind of go through a list of the patients, see what they're in for, make sure you know I have a game plan for each one. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see the patients throughout the days. And again, since I'm three months out, there is a lot of downtime to myself. So in the meantime, I'm just trying to put my face everywhere I could be, whether it be uh, local meetings for local businesses or you know exploring the different uh, physical therapy offices or primary mm -hmm. care physicians. Mm -hmm just shaking hands. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little frustrating because New York, you know, it's either you make it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it's hard when you go in there and, you know, someone already has a podiatrist, they send all their patients to, and you're sitting there saying, well, you know, I'm qualified as well. Right. I'll feel free to give you a chance. Um, so it could be frustrating, but again, it's three months, so you have to be patient. And everybody older than me keeps saying, be patient, be patient. And that's where I'm at. Really. Mm -hmm. So since you are just have just recently finished your residency, what would yep. be the advice that you would give students who are just coming out of residency? Um, there's there's so much to talk about for students just coming out of residency. I mean, unfortunately, med school, you know, it's funny. Real school doesn't prepare you for the thing life brings about, whether it be yeah. through taxes or, you know, rent and bills and all that. You kind of learn as it goes. Med school also falters, and so does residency, in preparing you for the real world in the sense of, you know, contract negotiation, billing, and how you're going to make your money and what your day is like. So coming out of residency, you know, I would say don't jump on the first opportunity that comes your way. Um, I definitely played out all my options before I made a decision, and you kind of become eager to sign a contract because everyone around you is signing contracts and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I still unemployed? But you shouldn't really settle for less. Um, you should really weigh out your options. And the options sometimes aren't just dollar values. It's not like, hey, this guy's paying me X amount versus this. I'm just going to go with the higher value. You have to go with what you're comfortable and where you're going to grow as well. If there's right. no room for growth. That was a big no-no for me. So if, if one of the biggest questions I asked someone was, what is the path to partnership if I if I'm your employee, you know, and if they said there is no path to partnership or there is no path for you to be a part owner in here, 
I just immediately excluded them because, um, you know, in New York, with the rules and regulations here, especially with something called a non-compete clause, if someone has multiple practices and you're just an associate and you want to move on and do your own thing, they may prohibit you from working in the vicinity of any of their practices. That kind of diminishes your growth. It stuns your ability to really advance. So again, you really, really have to weigh out your options, uh, look it over, read the contract twice, get a lawyer to look at it and get advice from fellow podiatrists. You know, I, I had no shame in asking other people, what do you think of this deal? Um, and ultimately, you know, when I tell people what I have, uh, God bless, you know, it's, it's been a very fortunate, very fortunate to have what I have here. That's great. But and that's, that's really that's good advice. Number one thing. Yeah. That's my number one way out your options. If you have, if, you know, residency ends June 30th, if you have to sign that contract June 30th, don't feel ashamed, you know, <laughs> just, you know, your worth, you work three years in residency for you work four years in med school, you work four years in college for this. Don't settle for less. That's that's basically right. the best right. advice. Yeah. So you mentioned the path to partnership. Is that yeah. a goal that you have for yourself? Absolutely. You know, the best the best scenario for a podiatrist, right, who wants to work in a private practice world. So we're not talking about group practices. We're not talking about hospital setting. We're talking about private practice. The best path is to assume ownership of another practice. So, you know, you find the podiatrist who's ready to retire and he has one or two years left in the tank. And he says, listen, I'll introduce you to all my patients. You know, I'll pay you X amount of dollars. And within two years, I'm going to sell you the practice for X amount. That's the best path to be your own boss, owner, and so forth. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely something I always wanted to be. You know, people who know me know, you know, I'm not egotistic, but uh, I'm definitely stubborn in my ways. And uh, I just, you find out very early on your personality. And I've never been right. the type to really like to take orders. You know, even residency, I struggled with that. You know, and, uh, I'm sure my upper year residents will tell you that uh, I struggled with taking orders from certain people. So, uh, you know, I just I just know myself and I know for a fact if I had to work underneath somebody for the length of my career, I would just I would be unhappy. Good to know yourself and what it is that you uniquely want. Uh, absolutely. You know, there's some people I remember once I asked someone, what is the path to partnership? And he said, why would you want to be a partner? I told him, well, you know, I don't want to have a ceiling. I want to be, you know, sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. make as much as you can reach as many people as you can. And he told me, well, you know, I have associates making 160,000 a year, you know, and they work nine to five. What's wrong with that? And absolutely nothing. Some right. people love that. Some people love going in at nine, leaving at five, not worrying about, you know, the overhead or the costs of running a practice or any of the other lingo. And that's fine. That's absolutely, if you're that type right. of person, go for it. You know, some people love the uh, VA gig where they work in a VA hospital, nine to five, 40 hours a week, get benefits, get $120,000 salary. And they're okay with that. They're, they're absolutely, and there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. Um, but just like you said, know yourself, know your goals and what you'd be comfortable with and go for it. Yeah, and it sounds like within podiatry, you have options to potentially own your own practice or to work in various settings where it's more of a, a nine to five job where you can check in, check out. Sure, sure. There's um, so there's definitely there's definitely it's a competitive field. So a lot of people have this misconception that you know when you get out of residency, jobs are just going to be flowing. You're just going to have such a large variety of jobs. But the reality is, unless you're willing to relocate, that's not the case. You know, uh, for me, I was zoned into New York. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there was a bunch of job offers, but were they meeting my needs? And sometimes, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, so for you to say, I'm going to graduate and get a hospital job, that's my goal. That might not be as easy as you think. You know, um, a lot of times when a podiatrist has a hospital gig, they're in that same gig for 10, 20 years. Why would they give it up? That's their dream job, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not many hospitals that requires five, six podiatrists on staff. Mm -hmm. So you have to very be conscious of that. You know, really, really do. Um, and a lot of people who get these hospital jobs or, you know, VA jobs, they've been doing it for quite some time. It's not, you know, fresh out of residency kind of thing. So uh, again, be conscious of it. Do your homework beforehand, for Hi. sure. Good thing for students to know ahead of time as they're preparing to leave their residency and make their next plans. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, it, it's such a struggle because in residency, you don't think about these things because residency, you know, you're overworked, underpaid. The last thing on your mind is, oh, let me start planning out my future. It's it's very hard. And I know mm -hmm. people outside the field will say, oh, but future is most important. Shouldn't you be planning that from day one? 
And theoretically, yeah, you should, but in reality, it just doesn't work like that. You know, you're so swamped with everything. That's the last thing on your mind. Um, so, yeah, I mean, ideally, you would love to have a path of where you're going, but realistically, it, it doesn't settle in till third year or last year of residency and you finished your board examinations and now you're sitting down going, okay, let me figure out what's out there. Right. So it's, right. yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very nerve wracking for sure. I bet. Uh, so let's jump to, you know, what you're currently doing now. What are, what's your favorite part of the job and what's your least favorite part of the job right now? Um, you know, luckily for me being in the area I am, I, I truly enjoy the uh, patient doctor interactions. Mm -hmm. um, the patients we meet are by far willing to get better. They want to get better. Compliance so far hasn't been an issue for my end. And that just makes your job that much better. You know, when a patient comes to you for help and willing to work with you, because at the end of the day, the doctor patient relationship, you're a team, you know, all you can do is give your advice and your recommendations. But if the patient doesn't go out and do any of it, you know, it's frustrating for both. And that leads me to the least favorite part is, you know, medicine is a never ending learning field. It really is. You know, research is constantly advancing. The things we did 20 years ago aren't the same things we're doing now. And a lot of people who go the med route are used to um, being right. You know, we take examinations and we have to score a certain amount of right answers to pass through that. And that's how we get through each hurdles. But in reality, in medicine, there are going to be times where you're wrong, you know, and, and your wrong could really affect the patient's well-being or, or daily life. And I think that's the least favorite part. You know, you try not to have that way on your shoulders, but it's going to happen. You're going to make a mistake and you're going to be wrong. And uh, mm -hmm. You know, you just have to brace yourself for that, for sure. Good to know. What has been your most memorable experience with a patient? Um, you know, it's, it's really hard to sum that up to one, one memorable moment. You can tell uh, a few. <laughs> um, you know, it was definitely, it was definitely during residency. Residency is, is, you know, and I'm sure other residents can speak to this. Residency is like an emotional roller coaster. You know, you go through times where you're just stressed. You want to pull your hair out. And um, sometimes the patients make that worse on you, you know, screaming at you, cursing you, and that will happen. And you're just sitting there going, what am I doing this for? You know, I'm getting paid like $3 to the hour at this point, And this guy doesn't even appreciate me. But um, definitely the most memorable moments are when the patient does appreciate you. You know, when they see you with bags under your eyes, coming in tired, and, you know, they want to talk about you for a little bit instead of them. You know, hey, doc, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? You know, so the, those memories sit in your head forever. And, uh, you know, for let's say the 90 times patients don't appreciate you, the 10% the of the times they do definitely make it worthwhile. Um, so I don't have a specific moment, but, you know, yeah. uh, there are definitely moments that's good. That makes it all all worthwhile. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Um, so would you recommend the field of podiatry to other students? Um, you know, you have to really like it. You have to really want it because there are times if you don't want it, you will think about quitting. Absolutely. So many times, whether it be in med school, whether it be in residency, um, there are going to be times where you're thinking to yourself, is this even worth it? What am, what am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm drowning in debt. I'm not happy. Why, why am I doing this? So if, you know, if I was talking to a student who was in college, I would legitimately tell them, look back and ask yourself, is this what I want? Am I willing to go through the hurdles? Am I willing to be patient um, and do this? And that's, mm -hmm. that's the honest to God answer. And I know people, you'll meet a lot of people in the med field who will always up their profession. You know, they'll talk about their profession as if it's God's gift to the earth. And you, you think to yourself as a student, because you're so impressionable, oh, wow, this is the best job in the world. But in reality, if you don't like what you're doing, there are many times in your path that you will second guess yourself and go, oh, my God, is, is this for me? Did I make a mistake? Mm -hmm. But if you're confident in your decision, you will say, no, 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 there's an end game to this. And I'm, and I'm working towards that. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not a decision to take lightly. Not at all. Not at all. No, absolutely. Absolute. This shouldn't be a decision based on mom and dad or, you know, people around you saying, oh, you're smart. You should just do medicine. No, 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 no. You, you have to do what you feel is best. Remind, reminder, this is going to be the thing you're doing for years, years. Right. So 
Um, you have to sit back and ask yourself. I mean, there's times you question yourself all the time. You know, you see your friends who went into employment right after college and they're making money and they're exploring the world and they're traveling and they're living that life. And you're sitting down really just studying and you're going to ask yourself, what did I do? What do you know? Did I do the right thing? I, and you'll and I'm telling you that that will haunt you if you're not completely confident in your decision. Uh, I would not take this decision lightly at all, at all. Good. Good for students to know that ahead of time. Sure, sure. sure. So you touched on this before, but uh, medic podiatric medical school is an investment. So yes. uh, what would be yeah. your advice for students as they're sort of thinking through that decision? And, and how did you make your decision to make that financial investment to attend podiatric medical school? Right. So for me, the path was a little different because I, I started business in college and I graduated with a business degree. However, during that time, there was a huge recession. Um, and the business world was just in turmoil. So it didn't make sense to be a new college grad pursuing the business field when people with 20 years of experience are losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so you sit there and you, you, you do the math and it, it really is the key word you used is an investment. It really is as much as you want to say, you know, I'm doing this because I love it. At the end of the day, there's a financial factor to it. Uh, yeah. So you sit there and you do your homework. You really do your homework. You ask yourself, okay, what are the tuition costs? What kind of scholarships do they offer? What will my living costs be? Because sometimes the living costs can be more than the actual tuition. You know, podiatry school is, is kind of not that expensive in comparison to other medical schools out there. But if you're going to move and relocate, it can be very expensive. Right. And then you have to ask yourself, what is the um, potential in earnings, you know, mm -hmm. because if I'm going $300,000 in debt, but the average podiatrist makes 150000 you know, uh, it doesn't make sense to do this, you know. Right. So you really, really, you know, the financial aspect, you'd hate to say that uh, you should do what you want without thinking about it. But realistically speaking, it has to be in the back of your mind Part somewhere. Part of the decision. I, I, I think so. I, yeah. I, I've always been a realist. Yeah. Uh, as much as people say, chase your dreams, follow this, follow that. That's great. But, you know, I know a lot of people struggling to eat and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't want to be that person. So I, I think financial aspects should play a role. Uh, I don't think podiatry is a scapegoat in the sense in the financial world. Oh, podiatry school may be cheaper. Let me just go there because a lot of med schools, you'll, you'll come to realize, offer a decent amount of scholarships. And there are some people, my colleagues who are graduating from med school who are less in debt than I am. So, um, you know, weigh out all your options. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have that in the back of your mind. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And that's something that we're doing with Equez is we're helping students sort of weigh out the, the different school options and helping them think through the investment aspect as well. And absolutely. You know, different schools have different caps and how much scholarship they give and, mm -hmm. you know, ask yourself how much is it going to cost there. So let's say a school in California is charging 20000 a year. And in your head, you're like, wow, you know, some colleges are more than 20000 But living in California is going to cost you more than yeah. 20000 You know, So you have to really weigh it out and ask yourself, what's the best investment? And ultimately, when it comes down to deciding between podiatry schools, if you do your part, you'll be okay. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. especially in the podiatry world, like it's not like, oh, he went to so-and-so school. He's, he's lower class. He, he's worse off than someone who went to this school. Not really. You know, if you do your job and you show your part, you'll, you'll be OK. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the student that's going to determine their success. Absolutely. It's not necessarily which school you went to. Schools no. can certainly help and provide the training. But ultimately, I mean, you're the student. You're going to be the one that makes it happen. Absolutely. You know, yes, there is some bias in the sense if you went to a New York school, you probably have a little bit of more of advantage to get a New York residency. Absolutely. That's that's a fact. You do. Mm -hmm. But if someone is, shows their abilities and is a standout, you'll get the upper edge. Absolutely. The connection you have being from New York and a New York residency doesn't outweigh someone who's a star studded student. You know, mm -hmm. so again, if you do your part, you'll be OK. Good. Good stuff. We touched on this a little bit before, but um, is there any other advice that you would give to students who are considering podiatric medical school? Um, you know, just uh, brace yourself for, uh, you know, an emotional roller coaster. I use this term and I'll use it again. You know, it really is. It daunts you because you have to balance school and life. And sometimes that could be a little difficult. 
Um, you know, you're trying to keep everybody at home happy, but at the same time, you have uh, assignments to get done and tests to take over. And mm -hmm. one day you're getting a 90 on an exam, the next day you're getting a 70, and you're wondering what what's going on and how do I balance this? It really is an emotional roller coaster, um, and uh, it's 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 very stressful. Some people take a different route. Some people say, you know. I'm just going to do my part. I'm going to study my time, go to sleep eight hours, and whatever happens, happens. And they're okay with that. They're okay with not being the top student in their class and mm -hmm. just getting by and going about their day. And there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes I envied that person because they were just so stress-free in comparison mm -hmm. to me, who I always felt like I should be the top student. And if you're not in the top, then what are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I invested my first two years in podiatry completely to school. I mean, everything else was nothing. I didn't go on vacations. And I know people are going to hear that and be like, wow, what a loser. But that's the reality of it. I didn't, yeah. I didn't invest in vacations because I didn't have the financial means for it. And I just felt like my time was better spent with family and, and people right. around. Right. Um, and the reality is the first two years of medical school is where a bulk of your GPA is determined. So I told myself, listen, why don't I invest two years get the highest grade point average I could possibly get. And then the next two years, I'll, uh, I'll be okay. You know, then I could live that stress-free life that everybody else does, go out, have fun with everyone, which is exactly what I did. And um, do I regret it? Not really. I mean, someone else will look at me and say, oh, you know, but I lived that life four years while you lived it too. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're kind of in the same position, maybe. But, you know, for me, that was my goal. I, I don't like to take chances. So mm -hmm. I did exactly that. I invested everything I could at the first two years. And then year three and four, the GPA doesn't weigh as heavy. You're more in the clinical setting. Sure. So that gives you more of an advantage to kind of do the things you missed out the first two years. Got it. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate the realness because students need to know these yeah. things. Yeah, so you know, and you I, I always tell people, because when you're a student, you're so impressionable and you go to all these different doctors and they all say great things about their profession. Yeah. But, you know, any, anybody who's really looking at it has to sit back and go, not every profession's perfect. You know, something yeah. something has to be off. So you have to ask these questions like if you could go back in time, what would you do differently? Or, you know, or um, is there any negative aspect about your job? You keep telling me how great your job is, but there's got to be a negative aspect, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot, it's, it's multifactorial decision. You can't make this sure. decision overnight. You can't just take an exam and say, I'm just going to do it. Whatever happens, happens. Um, you definitely have to put in the time and think about it. Ask around, uh, if you want to shadow, shadow, whatever works for you, works for you, but definitely be confident in what you're pursuing. Absolutely. I completely agree. So at the end, uh, what I usually do is give people an opportunity to talk about any side hustles they do related to podiatry or, you know, talk about the practice that they're working at. So is there anything you want to talk about there? Um, as of now, you know, there's really no side hustle, you know, like, like I said, my goals at this point straight out of residency is try to conquer this debt that I have because, you know, you feel handcuffed by it at certain times, you know, you can't do certain things or you can't make these investments that you want to because you have this six figure debt looming over you. So uh, there's no room for really side hustle. The only hustle at this point is just trying to get my name out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I put in a lot of years of work, training and accomplishments. And, you know, um, you want the world to see that and you want the world to feel confident in coming to you and uh, choosing you for their care and whatnot. And it's, it's a hard thing to do. It really is. It really frustrates you at times. And, mm -hmm. you know, you sit there and you know other people who are doing well and you tell yourself, but... You know, they graduated lower than me and they have uh, lower credentials. You know, why, why do people trust them over they trust me? But you have to really just suck it up and uh, keep trucking. You really do. And you, you treat every patient one patient at a time. And I can't tell you in the short time I've been practicing how many patients come back and say, oh, so and so recommended I come to you. So oh, that's great. Yeah, you know, the best the best marketing is the, the way you treat patients, really is. Mm -hmm. You know, you give every patient the attention they need, the care they need, mm -hmm. and hopefully word of mouth eventually spreads. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's patience, patience is the key here. It yeah. really is. It really is. So there's no room for hustle. Hopefully one day, you know, I'll have enough time to pursue other things and put my money right. other places. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's very important. You know, you don't want podiatry to be your only source of income. Uh, some people are content with that, and we said that before. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. But if you're if you have ambition or you're eager to do more, then do more. Absolutely, I think podiatry in the long run will give you enough 
financial capital to invest in other things and take chances. So um, as of now, I'm too early in, in the gig to yeah. uh, any side hustles. The only hustle is, again, getting yourself out there. So I like that. Yeah. Sure. I like that. Thanks. Okay, so final question, Dr. Ramawi. Uh, if you could go back to your first day of podiatric medical school, what is one piece of advice that you would give yourself? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, uh, brace yourself, I guess. <laughs> Just really, really brace yourself and... You know, there's a lot of times in, in podiatry school, you know, you, you people who um, have been through med school or are in podiatry school will realize this. There's a lot of time in podiatry school where you're just trying to juggle. You're really, yeah. really trying to juggle everything. You know, you come to school and you're trying to keep up with everyone else, but little do they know you're, you know, going through some issues at home and, you know, you come to school, you put this mask on for the patients and for your colleagues, but little do they know you haven't seen your family in two or three years because, you know, they're overseas and you're here. Um, or you go to school and you realize this decision is becoming a final financial burden on your family because they're helping you pay this off. And mm -hmm. and you try, to, you try to do your best. And it really, you know, to me, I don't commend doctors because, you know, they're smart or this and that. To me, there's no such thing as smart or less smart. It's just you know, whoever's smart enough to work hard will work hard. That's, that's really all it is. I commend doctors because for you to go through this four years, four year schooling and balance everything else you had along with you, it's, it really truly is remarkable. And that's why I respect people with that because, um, you know, you hide all these things and you, you put on this mask for everyone to see mm -hmm. and you go about it, you know, um, and it's tough. It's tough. You're having a bad day. The patient is rude to you, doesn't appreciate you. And, in your head, you're thinking, if you only knew the things I have to go through, you, maybe you wouldn't talk to me like this. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the 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 best thing I would tell myself is brace yourself, really, okay. brace yourself. And uh, again, patience is key, and that's why I, I reiterated before: you have to want to do this. If you right. don't, I promise you. And there was a lot of people in podiatry school who used to leave, you know, sec two years into it, didn't fail out. They did not fail out. They would just leave. They would just leave and people would always criticize them, but I wouldn't, I would never criticize them because I would tell myself they made the decision two years in, not 10 years in, two years in that, Hey, this isn't for me. And there's right. nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not for you. It's okay. But if you do your homework before, hopefully you can realize, you know what, this isn't for me. I'm, yeah. I'm going to go a different route. And that's why, again, if, if any students are watching this, really do your homework, really, really do your homework. This isn't, you know, some gig you do after college where you could say, I'll just go back get a master's and do something else or, you know what I mean? Uh, where you could kind of go back in time. This is a four year burden, three year residency, six figure debt. You're kind of, you're kind of trapped. So, uh, do your homework, know you want this and hopefully you get by and just know if you're going through something, someone else next to you is too. It really is. So that's, that's, that's my best advice. Brace yourself. Excellent. Well, Dr. Ramawi, like I said before, Thank you so much for being on our show and giving some students some real talk and some real advice about what they should be thinking about sure. and you know not to take this decision lightly. I think that this is, you know, something that I really wanted with the show is I didn't just want it to be kind of rah rah everybody let's do this. I wanted it to be a place where students could go to, you know, hear from real students, real residents, Absolutely. real doctors Absolutely. about what Absolutely. it's really like so they could make an informed decision. So I really appreciate Absolutely. your insights. Absolutely. You know, and again, uh, you know, I can't stress this enough. It sounds like you have a certain theme for your show and I, I applaud it. And just be be careful with the person who's, uh, you know, has nothing negative to say, because th those are the people that I, I've been fooled by constantly, mm -hmm. constantly. You know, it's the one who who has everything that really inside has nothing. So be, be careful with that. I think uh, you stressed it enough. Uh, the realness in the aspect and, you know, the reality of this decision should not be uh, overlooked. Absolutely. I agree with you completely. And I wish you the best on this show. And again, I'm sure you guys will put my contact information here and anybody's free to contact me anytime. It doesn't take much time in my day to give someone some advice or answer a question. It really doesn't. So I'm here for anything. Well, thanks once again, Dr. Ramawi. It was great having oh, you. Man. Absolutely. Likewise. Ditto. Thank you for listening to eQuez Audio. 
To learn more about podiatry and to explore schools, head over to eQuest.com. That's E-Q-U-E-Z.com to get personally matched to best fit programs. If you enjoyed listening, be sure to subscribe and we would love for you to rate and review us. Keep in mind that our discussion today mentions views and opinions that are personal in nature and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any university, agency, organization, employer, or company and should be used at your own discretion. We wish you the best in your quest for education.